good. Um, who, if you if you're not new to this show, somebody type something to Jared so he knows we're there. He knows we're there. He knows you're there. I'm on a lot of antibiotics, so this is I'm going to sit down for part of this. Um, but I'm feeling better. I just want to save the photo. Oh, good. Okay. So the major, almost everybody today, um, I went back and looked at the list. We've got some new folks who have done pattern with patterning with me, some in person and some uh, in webinar form. So we're going to start with the body block. And then the couple of you that are brand new, if you're like, ah, oh, I've never patterned anything in my life, let me know and I can get you the book info and I can get you just the section of our patterning class where we deal with making a body block. So we're going to start with a body block that's already made. Um, and, and I meant to print these out big, but I didn't. But I want to show you the two outfits we're going to be working on. So what some of this will be like a cooking show where it's like, here, look, this part's done, but I'll show you how we did it. And then some stuff I'll do live. And then we'll have a follow-up day next week. And I don't know if I listed the follow-up day, um, but three days isn't enough. We already know because we try to nail two costumes at a time when we do these. But um, I'll just show you. This is uh, we're doing a ballerina doll or a fairy doll um, variation for YAGP. And we're going to be patterning um, this bodice. And we're going to do a Hollywood cut bosque that will go up under the bodice. And we're going to do this cute sleeve. And we've already started on the top plate. Deborah Scholl's been cranking through the top plate. And I'm going to show you where we're at with that. And then um, we've got a friend that dances at a American Ballet Theater. And she's always getting photographed and stuff. So we're making her just a really fabulous, mostly white with some purple and lavender and fuchsia accent. Uh, tutu. So this is going to be a long line bodice that joins into the skirt. And then the other one will be um, two, a two piece, a separate bodice, separate from the skirt. So we're going to be kind of going back and forth on the two of these. So this is Erica is who's wearing this. We're going to call this the Erica costume. And this is the Alexandra costume. Um, so why don't I show you first? Okay, so... Um, if anybody has never patterned, they're going to want to get the costume technician handbook. Um, get the old copy, which is this is the old edition that's got the green and this choker on it. My babysitter's in here later on in the craft section, which is fun. And then um, if you if you like if if making a body block is super foreign to you, let me know in an email, and then I can sort out making sure you get that info. Because I'm going to start today with the body block. Uh, for the two costumes, and then we're going to create the pattern from the body block. But we're going to give this back to Deborah in a minute. I just want to show you kind of our process on the fairy doll top of her skirt, and I'll show you how we make this trim probably tomorrow, and I'll also show you kind of how I came up with this top plate. But um, right, what's weird is that a girl is an oval not a circle. So we've got this fun ruler that most of you have already. Um, and someone ordered one and they're still back ordered. I think it's Deborah Martin. Um, maybe not. Somebody, I owe someone a ruler, but just know that it's on my list. Um, so we we made our oval. And then what's, what's tricky is when we're trying to do these petals, so the fairy doll costume is going to have petals all the way around it, is you deal with trying to cram essentially a circle, right? Like a perfect 1970s flower clip art is a circle. We're trying to cram that into an oval because we want the same distance from her waist to the edge of every petal the whole way around her body. But where you run into trouble is that there's different angles in an oval, not angles, but there's different and tighter curves in an oval than in a circle. So it's like you make your petals for the side, front and back, and then I had to split the difference of the four petals that are in between. So my side back and my side front petals are fudged just a little bit. And if you look here at the front of the pattern, you can see like this inside line was like where it divides up perfectly. But then visually, I didn't want it to be so tight. So 
I kind of split the difference, and we'll talk about that more later. Um, but but let's look at what Deborah's got done so far. It's really darling. So she's making, and if anybody did the last page to stage, and like I think about six or seven of you guys did. So thanks for coming back. Um, we we're I'm really into making ruffles uh, edged in yarn right now. So that's what Deborah has been doing is making little net ruffles and little silk chiffon ruffles edged in yarn. So these are going to become this the the eight flower petals around the fairy doll skirt. And you'll see what she's done is traced it onto a pink net um, just with a real fine Sharpie to give her a guideline. And then eventually what's going to happen is they're going to all, so they they all run up into the waist, right? So eventually this is going to all get secured. So the like all the layers kind of pile onto each other and not at the waist, at the high hip. So we're going to be, we're going to be, see, they all kind of piggyback up at the hip. And then they get spread out to make the difference in size. So it like droops like a droopy teardrop. Then she's going to run a piece of gimp right down the middle of each one and roll it around and hide it. So we'll hide the raw ends. And this we're just working on now because it's time consuming. But I'll check in with you guys the whole way through. So they're going to get outlined with gimp, or interlined with gimp. And then we're going to take these uh, three little petals, these little trios of flowers, and put them at each bump, bump up like that. And then we'll put a mint green bow on it. So it's going to get out, it's going to get framed. And my, my idea is... Um, one of those like sugar Easter eggs. If anybody knows what I'm talking about, you get you can get these really elaborate Easter eggs with a with a motif inside, like a bunny having a party. That's kind of my inspiration for this whole thing. Um, so we'll let Deborah have this much back. It's all yours, beautiful. Deborah worked with me at the Joffrey. You want to wave on camera? There's Deborah. She's amazing. Have fun with your ruffles. Thank you. Here, I'll give you this to put back on that table, too. Thanks. Okay, so now, since we peeked at the fairy doll, we'll just work on fairy doll a little bit. Let me show you my pile of fabric. So underneath that beautiful, um, fluffy bit of ruffles is going to go one of these really loud laces, probably the more pink one. So this is going to kind of peek through under the ruffles. So this will eventually be just like a donut under the ruffles. And we might graft a few of these darker pink. We might graft a few of these in here and there. Or we might actually use this to frame on the inside of our, um, our little petals. Oh, I have a plan for the inside of those petals. We're going to stick some of this before we put the trim around it. And that will look like... Like so, I we, I want this whole thing to look like candy, like gross, teeth breaking candy. Then her bodice is going to be made out of this weird moray poly something, but we like the color of it. And then um, it's going to get fold back, so it, like not really piping, but like little bias edges of this weird Tiffany tealy egg something color. So this is going to be kind of what's going on in the bodice. And then her sleeves, which I thought had blue in them, but they do not. Her little two-tiered sleeves are going to be made from this um, uh, nice plastic curtain fabric. But it's got scallops at both edges, which makes it just super great. So where I'm all, we're always looking for, like, does it have two edges or are they the same? Uh, and if it doesn't, that's okay, too. Then the top and bottom of it, we're going to pipe just with this um, uh, plain uh, silk dupioni. So it, instead of piping it all with the same green, we're going to pipe it with a little bit of different green. And one of these will be kind of the crisscross down the center of her bodice. So we'll be sandwiching a few of those things together. So that's the fabric for that one. We won't even look at the fabric for the other one until we get going with it. So we're going to start with the fairy doll bodice and sleeves. 
save all of that stuff. I'm, I have to take a bathroom break, too, because I'm drinking a lot of liquid. Is that still Gatorade? Gatorade. It's disgusting. I put it like three-quarters water. But, yes, it's Gatorade. Okay. Let me get my body blog. Can you hand me that black tracing wheel that's right in that cup? Thanks. Okay. So we are going to start, so see, I'm going to sit and see if you can get the camera kind of like right over my shoulder. So I just cranked out a basic body block from the, is this someone for the class? Um, from the costume technician's handbook, and I didn't put the neck in. But what I did change is I left a gap between the front and back. Oh, and I grabbed a crappy ruler. That's all right. Okay. No, that's fine. But let's see. That's better. Tip it down a little bit more. Because I'm, I'm going to be lazy today. That's pretty good. I think that shows it pretty good. That's good. That's a good spot. How's the dog? Asleep? She's asleep. Okay, so we will look back really quick at the picture. Wham! This is what we're doing. So we're going to do this little bodice that's got a center front, middle front, and side fronts. We'll keep the back just a side back and a center back. And then we're going to do the Hollywood cut bosque and this sleeve with a little poof that stops at her elbow. Uh, and I've got most of the measurements I need except some of my sleeve measurements. I don't have her armhole or anything, but we can use the body block to solve some of those mysteries. So the first thing, before I start cutting this up, I'm going to figure out what her armhole is. And I'm going to just use my curved ruler with inches on it. Seven, eight, and a half. What? Wait, one, two, three. seven and a half. And then. Seven. So her armhole, we're going to say, is about 14 and a half ish inches. And since this is going to be poofy, um, it's all right that it's not completely accurate. And then the other thing that I like to do from the body block is the armpit is a little bit casual when you make the body block out of the book. So I'm going to raise this up about a half an inch or three-eighths of an inch. I'm going to do three-eighths. So the first thing, the first adjustment I'm making to my body block is I'm raising up the armpit just a teeny tiny bit because that's going to help her sleeve not hold her arm down, uh, and it's going to keep her bodice nice and tight up uh, under her arm. So the first thing I'm adjusting is I've raised the armhole about three-eighths of an inch. Usually somewhere between a quarter and a half is good, so that's why I picked three-eighths of an inch. Okay, so we're saved 14 and a half is our armhole because we're going to need that for our sleeve. But now we can start um, getting information that we need out of this. And you kind of think of it like triage. So I want this Hollywood cut boss which is a bosque that goes above the waist. Here's my waist. So I don't want to like cut that off and then have to redraft this. So the first thing I'm going to pattern is my bosque. So I'm going to just fold my paper right in half and use the tracing wheel to make my bosque. So, and the reason I like the Hollywood cut ones is they go up underneath the girl's bodice. So if your bodice is only coming to the waist at the side, if you do this high cut one, um, you've got a little more room there. So I'm going to make this an inch and a half taller than her waist, but it will fit her waist. That's, that's the important thing to know. So I'm going to just put a pin between my layers so that my paper doesn't shift when I'm cutting it out. You guys will see the same sweatshirt every day. It's the only thing that keeps me going. So the first thing I'm going to do is trace this through. 
So we're just making a photocopy of our bosque. So right, so our body block has the, a torso and a waist to high hip on it, and that's where a bosque occupies space. So I'm gonna just trace this off. I'm gonna trace the same darts. I'm gonna trace the waist and everything. And then we will already have a bosque that perfectly fits our costume and our girl. This one will fit flawless because I measured her myself. And the one going to ABT, my friend Tomoko measured her. So I know that one will fit really well also. It's a Christmas present. How fun is that? Right, that was fun to watch. But now we can just trace it out. So I perforated my lines. Then I'm going to go quickly through and mark it all up. I won't cut the paper out just yet on this, but you guys will be able to see my Bosque pattern. And we've also, on this body block, um, so the Bosque height on this is three and three quarters because this girl's she's pretty tall. I usually do about three and a half, but she's a little bit taller. And I made the back four and a quarter. So the back bosque is actually longer than the front bosque. And that helps keep the net from doing weird things. Um, it, it helps keep the net flat to the floor. Lots of times you'll see the girls have kind of a, a lilty tutu. It means that there's either like not enough in the back of the panty or there's not... Uh, enough in the back of the bosque. And actually, before I cut this all out, I'm going to put notches in and all my grain info, too. So look how quick and slick that is. It's funny. I've had a lot of girls just absolutely love these high cut ones and every now and then we'll send a YGP one to somebody who clearly doesn't get it and they'll just say it's too long it it's we try and because they're trying to make the bodice fit at the top of the bosque and I tell them take a breath and think about it and then they're then they're usually on board shortly after but it's different Okay, so now we've got our center back, our side back, our side front, and our center front, which is going to be on the fold. And then I'm going to give myself some notches. I used to put the side front and the side back both on the bias, but now I find it's kind of overkill, um, or you've got to tighten stuff up. So I like to put just the side back on the bias now. So I am going to put, my quilt ruler has a line already for 45 degrees. So I'm going to just use that line to put my bias in. Yeah, you bet. So my side back will be on the bias, so it will have some flex. Everything else will be on the straight of green coming right from the center. Right from the center. I mean the straight of grain is coming from the waist. Like the straight of grain is perpendicular to the waist. And in the center back, it's at the center back. So your center back line is the same as your grain line. So I said I wasn't going to cut it out. And then I drew this weird line across the whole top. And this is going to get traced in cotille and um, flatlined with our pink. But we're not really going to put much decoration on it. We'll probably pipe the bottom edge because that looks nice. And the nice thing about the bosque with seams is that you have somewhere to actually adjust it. And uh, it's kind of the same thought that like, you know, when a bodice has a couple more seams in it, you can make it fit better. I kind of apply that to the bosque. If you've got a few seams, it's easier to make it fit. 
and I think it looks nice. Okay, so we're going to put that away. So none of this has seam allowance. Somebody just asked. Somebody just asked if it has seam allowance. It does not. It is going to be up to us later to put the seam allowance on. So we're going to put that away. And the other bodice that we're going to work on is long line. So I don't have to worry about, I don't have to like label the two right now. This is only going to be for Alexander's. Okay, so now, so now that we're back to our pattern, we don't have to worry about losing the bosque because we traced it off. Um, but I am going to, in, well, actually, when Jared's back, he can grab me a long, a long curved ruler. But what I like to do first is to start to kind of pencil in my design. So, like, I sharpie this right for camera, um, but I sharpie stuff a lot for myself, too. I'm going to look at my sketch again really quick. So we've got a center front with some crisscrossies, middle front, side front, and probably about an inch strap uh, that's really far out on our armhole. So we're going to start with, I'm going to start actually by kind of first putting in the strap. You just tentatively guess where the strap is going to be. Oh, I broke my pencil already. So none of this is set in stone at all. And actually, my back shoulder has a half an inch of ease in it. So I'm going to just whack off a quarter of an inch and then go in an inch. So I'm kind of splitting the difference. Instead of using all that ease, I'm going to blend my strap back into my armhole. And if that like little ease thing I just said is like, what? What's going on? If you get that costume technician book and just read that, uh, read the body block making, it'll, it'll start to make sense. So, so simply all I've done is kind of pencil in where my straps are going to be, or our armhole. We need a bodice with an armhole. Um, then I'm going to just first, so I can see, I know where her nipple is. So I'm going to just kind of start penciling in and guessing how much skin can I get away with without having a problem with that. But since this bodice is going to be separate, uh, it will move up and down her body somewhat, so I don't have to go as high as you would with like a Russian cut bodice. Would you give me a long curved ruler? No, what, yeah, that one in your left hand is better. So I'm going to just kind of pencil my front neck in. Thanks. You're welcome. And then I'm going to pencil my back neck in. And since she's a doll, we're not as concerned about getting the back of something this style um, super duper low. You know, with a lot of bodices, we're like, how low can we get this? Um, but since she's playing something charming, um, I'm not as worried. So I like the necklines that I've got. So I'm going to just pencil them in so, or marker them in so you can start to see them. And a little bit at the center back, you want to be perpendicular there so that the back hooks up super nice. And then I'm going to just take my curved ruler and start to see where does it fit in. And if I need to shift a little bit from my original line, that's fine. It's kind of like sketching. You're kind of sketching it piece by piece or all the pieces first and then fine tuning all your lines like an artist. And I think the distance down we've got in the front is safe for this girl's shape and age. So I'm just going to kind of twist my ruler until I like the way it looks. And when you make your own patterns, that's like the best part. It's like you get to do what you want. Okay, so we've got the neck in. Then the next thing I like to do is deal with the hem. And her hem, uh, her bodice points down towards the bosque in the front, and then it scoots up at the side, and then we're going to make it kind of like split the difference in the back. So I know that I don't want it all the way down to her, her bosque, because when she bends forward, the bodice will bow like that, if because there's going to be a bone in there. Um, so I'm going to go up about an inch about three quarters of an inch from the bottom. So this is where the netting is going to join 
our Hollywood Bosque, right? So I'm going up a little bit from there. Then I'm going to close the dart, right? Because we're imagining the dart is gone. If I rotary cut him a little bit, not rotary cut him, tracing him. Come on, fold. So I'm going to close that dart so that I can pencil in more without having to deal with the dart. We're just going to pretend it's not there. So now I'm going to just start kind of creating my, my hem of the bodice. And I think we're pretty close here. It's just going to go up. I sometimes like to have the highest point of it, point of it. I like to have the highest point of it kind of over the front of her leg instead of at the side. Um, but you can play with that too. You'll see here. So I'm putting the slightly higher part of my curve over her leg rather than at the very side of her body. So here's where I can just draw right over the dart because it's closed. Flip my ruler the other way, and it gives me the pretty part of the curve that matches up to the curve we just did. Victorian people figured that out. Now I'm going to cut. Actually, I'm going to separate my front from my back because it will be easier to fold. I'm just putting a little cut at the waist so I can fold stuff. So now I want to see how my front deals with the back. Instead of doing them separately, I want to put them together. And I am going to make this kind of curve out towards the center back. But I don't want it to go all the way up to the waist. I want there to be a little bit of room. So I'm seeing again how my curves relate to each other. And I'm letting, it's like I kind of know where I want it, but I can also see what wants to happen with the ruler. So I'm going to like let the ruler make the final decision. And see, I also brought my back to the front a little bit just to make sure that it all lines up nice later on. Now I'm going to fold this dart closed. And I'm going to jam the ruler back in there on my closed dart. If I can get it to stay closed. Come on. It's part origami art, this stuff. There, and I'm going to just kind of finish off that little bit of a curve. And like we did at the neck, it's nice to have a smidge of it go um, perpendicular to the center back because then if you tighten or loosen the hooks and bars a little bit, you don't get like weird, weird things going on. So why don't we just cut the bottom of this off so you can start to see that there's a bodice on the way. And we'll also, in a little bit, we'll cut the top off. Okay, look at that. So if you just sewed these, this bust dart and these waist darts in and sewed this up, it would fit exactly the same as it's going to when I chop it up. Brought to you by Gatorade. Okay, so now the next thing I'm gonna do I said we're going to keep the back simple, right? So we're going to just make a princess seam that goes up into her armpit. So easy. Her thing is all about her top plate and bows. So we don't need to impress anybody with the seams on this one. But I will put my couple notches in right now. And uh, this isn't going to have uh, anything on the bias in the back. We might put the side print on the bias. Another neat thing to know, when you've got cuts that are cutting across the bias, it adds a little bit of flex as if you have put a piece on the bias. Not as much as putting a piece on the bias, but it does add a little bit of flexibility there. So I've got my center back, my side back, my all-important notches, because you know if they match perfect in paper, they're going to match perfect in the real world. Um, then I'm going to 
make sure I know which line I am actually following. And before I cut the dart part out of this to make it a side back and a center back, I'm going to show you a couple, I'm going to show you two things that I like to do with a pattern like this that you can apply to all kinds of things, even patterns you've already got. So right where the waist is, is the part where she's flexible. So I like to just like force their waist to be a smidge tighter. So I'm going to go right where the waist is, an eighth of an inch on each side of my dart. And then I'm going to quickly blend that up into the dart. So what we've done is we're just pinching the waist where it's most pinchable. And I'm only taking it down like an inch into the bottom. So you can see these outside pencil lines. I just went an eighth and an eighth. And that's going to tighten her waist a quarter here and a quarter on the other side, which is a half an inch. So we're taking a half an inch out of her body, but where we can take it out. Now, if we took this, if we tightened it the whole way up and down the dart, it's not going to fit because it's going over her ribs and her hips and stuff. But if we can sneak away a little bit where they're mushy, um, go for it. That's essentially like corset making. You start with a body block that fits the boobs and the hips. Then you just calculate out how much smaller you want to make stuff. And you just kind of start dividing that around the body and making it smaller. How great. We've got our back and our side back ready to go. Now let's get our front ready to go. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Okay, so I'm going to have to close up the darts here, but it can be done. Um, I'm going to start by figuring out what is the shape that I want for my center front. Do I want a straight line making my center front, which is kind of what I drew, but I know that usually I like to have a little bit of a curve. So I'm going to do a little bit of a curve because I think it looks um, more girly and ballerina-tastic if you've got curves rather than a whole bunch of straight lines. But sometimes we do a whole bunch of straight lines. And you know what? That piece is going to work. So I'm not even going to roughly pencil it in. I'm going to just say there's my center front, which we're going to put on the fold. You could absolutely put a seam there too if you want and then like ruche your blouse over it or there's all kinds of things you can do. Then I like to put a little notch a little V where the edge, where the end of my center front ends. I like to give myself some kind of a note so I know like where does that actually line up. And then I'm going to give myself a single notch before we cut it out. Now, middle front. So when we put the middle front on, it will make the side front also. So the middle front and the side front are going to happen at the same time. So first I'm just going to kind of fold out the bust dart and kind of decide how much middle front do I want. And this I will definitely fine tune here with a ruler, but I'm just going to kind of pencil it in first. You see, wherever I run into the dart, I'm closing the dart. I think we don't have to go so wide with this because she's a simple character. What if we keep it more like that? No, you know what? I like it narrower. More lines in the middle. See, even when you think you know your plan exactly, you might change it a little bit. This is kind of a, you need a third hand here. So where I originally was, looking at it, I think is just a little bit small compared to how much room I've got across her bust. So I'm going to just kind of twist my ruler a little bit until I get something where like 
the top and bottom are a little more related. So that's, that's the line I think I'm going to make. I think it's a little more vertical to keep her tall, nice and tall in the front. And I just think it's a little more balanced out. Okay, so now we've got our center front, our middle front, and our side front. But we've got these pesky darts to get rid of. So the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of cut it out. I'm going to cut out my top neck edge. Shoulder strap. Shoulder. Remember we raise the armpit a smidge at the beginning because it's dance and she shouldn't be comfortable. I don't know why. It's just how it is. Looks better too. Um, okay, so now I've got to get rid of the darts. So the first thing, would you hand me a tape? Um, is there any back there? Thank you. So this bus dart is an easy one to get rid of. All I'm going to do is just tape it closed. But what gets tricky is our seam here is running over a spot where the dart goes in and out and in. So we have a little bit of monkeying to do with down there. So we're going we're gonna to solve that problem. So I'm just slicing my bus dart and closing my bus dart. And if you get a little bubble in the paper, just smash it down. Paper is flexible. So you can kind of start to see that like this has a, a little bit of a cup in it. You can kind of start to see where the bust is actually going on. But now I want to cut this apart more, but I'm going to give myself a couple notches before I cut it apart. I'm going to do a notch there and a notch there. Now I'm going to just cut along that line to start to see what I'm left to deal with. And I can cut off my center front. And I use the waistline, the line that's drawn across the whole waist. I use that as a notch the whole, the whole way through, on the bosque and on the bodice. Okay, so now our middle front, he's pretty easy. We've just got this slim little dart remnant we've got like some dart leftovers to slice and close but since the darts are hitting in the middle of the piece now it wants to raise up so we're going to see kind of how much it wants to raise up and we're going to decide what to do because we've got options On a girl who's bustier, what you can do is, right, so these two darts are coming together, and this doesn't want to lay flat on the table. One thing you can do is actually just smash it down, give it a press with the iron, and whatever happens, happens. And what's happening here is we're just losing like an eighth of an inch of height across right where her nipple is, which is actually what we're going to do this time around. The other thing you can think about is... Um, uh, I've done a few different tops in musical theater where you want the seams on either side of their nipple, but you're ending up with something that won't lay flat. You can open up and leave one of these darts in there. So you, can, you could open that back up and have this tiny little dart or larger bust girl, it will be larger, that you actually have a dart within a piece. And I think it always looks better that something fits well rather than you've made such a nice, flat, simple pattern. So if it's like it just needs a dart to fit, leave a dart somewhere and sew it in later. But we're going to do the smash it down method. And the way I can check to make sure that, that I've still got a bust going on is I can put my front together and my side front together. And actually, when I put my side front together, you can see here that we've moved the dart up towards the armpit. So we still have dart going on, which is what matters. So we've got our center front. We have got our middle front. Now, our side front has some dart left over still to get rid of. 
So I'm gonna just cut along the dart. And it's like, we're in, we just need to close it up with paper, right? But I've got a dart that goes in and out. So when I just lay it together, I'll hold this up and show it better. When I just lay it together, you can see I'm not getting rid of all of that dart. What I need to do is lay the top together and then lay the bottom together so that um, we've got the right thing going on at the waist. This is your mom's, right? What? Better check. Phone break. A lot law lost under the bed. I don't know what's going on. Okay, so I'm going to slice this across the waist. Then I can fit the top section in. So I'm closing up the dart. And then I can fit the bottom section in. And the thing is, if you have a little bit of overlap going on, here, zoom in on that, because this throws people sometimes. Okay, so I put my top section of the dart in, and then when I put my bottom section in, I'm, it's overlapping a tiny little bit. So what you can do, because we don't want to shrink the length here, right? You're going to just slide it down to where it's not overlapping, and then you'll see that you've gained... So we haven't changed the distance of this edge, right? We've kept this edge one length, but we gained a little bit at the bottom. So like that little triangle that we gained is essentially the shape that I need to cut off of the bottom. So we're good to go now. Then the other thing that I like to do, even if I think I've done everything super duper great and followed the book, I like to put one more cut in my side front or middle front, wherever it seems like it's going to be the easiest to get to, and make just a smidge more cup. So like when you're sewing like a Vogue pattern or something, a bodice, you're always like there's instructions where you like bring the top in just a smidge to their body. So if you're ending up with patterns you've already got and you're having a little bit of a gappy top, just put a cut from the armpit or somewhere near the armpit down like a few inches into a piece and then we're just going to fold that over about a quarter of an inch and what that does is it makes a little bit more cup in the bust so what I did is I've just increased the amount that's getting taken away right there which will help hold this all in nice and flat to her body and we're going to make the side front of this on the bias. Because my side back is kind of wide. If I did the whole side back on the bias, it's going to get a little bit spongy. But I want a little bit of flex, so I'm going to make just the side front on the bias. So I'm taking the bias from my waist. And then my middle front... The bias, it can be up the center of your waist dart or from the waist, either one. You will end up with the same. And my center front piece, it is going to be uh, on the fold. So my grain line will be on the fold. So let's look at our whole thing. And then we're going to make the sleeve for this together. And we'll refer to the book. Then we'll trace a little bit and kind of make a plan for the length of our netting. And that's where we're going to get through today on this. Actually, why don't I do the other bodice real quick? Um, I won't explain as much, but I'm going to do the bodice that's going to go with the purple tutu. And then we will come back and make the sleeve that goes this, with this one. So I'm going to pin all this together. So basically, other than the sleeve, our fairy doll bodice and bosque are re ready to go. Let me grab the other girl's body block. This one is not going to have a separate bosque. It's going to be a long line bodice. So it's going to be an all-in-one kind of thing. And let me grab the picture, even though it's kind of hard to tell. Um, and I will show you 
Was there a, uh, oh, never mind. Um, is there a bag? What's all in that bag? We'll look at her fabrics and stuff, too. Um, I think I've got them all out on the table already. We're also working on a Spanish thing, which is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to stick lace over this black and gold. Not in the class, but you guys will see pictures of it online. We've got this really cool old-timey lace that we're going to stick over the red. Um, and this weird metallic non-brocade something that's going to need a ton of interfacing to work, but that's going to be a bodice. So let's look at the picture for our more, more fun, purple, modern one. Um, if I, how do I tip it? There we go. These are on Facebook too. Um, so this is just going to be a long bodice that goes all the way down uh, into the skirt. And I might have a built-in bosque where the bosque is sewn to the bodice. But I'm going to kind of just start laying the pattern out and we're going to see what's happening. But the fabrics for this are going to be some of this. Um, I always look for stuff that's got a motif that repeats over and over and over and over and over again. And how easy it is it to cut the big motif into small ones. So some of this is going to go on this beaded stuff and for the for like the guts of the bodice for the long bodice we found yesterday um, this really nice four ply white silk so what's going to happen is the top of her bodice is going to have a little bit of a dip in it so sh so she'll have a little bit of dip in her skin but then we're going to take this white beaded lace and go straight across the dip so you'll we're going to purposely make it so that some of her her natural flesh is showing behind this piece of lace. So rather than something that like has nice little points or a heart or something, it's going to have a little more of a modern like bridal shape to the neckline. So that's going to go over the white silk. And then we're going to be cutting up pieces of that one and pieces of this lace um, and appliquing it going down the bodice. So her bodice will have the white beads at the top and then getting thicker and thicker down towards the waist, we're going to be using these different purple motifs. And we're going to airbrush the bottom of the bodice, just a little bit of purple, and we're going to dip some of the netting right at the hip a little bit purple. So it's going to go from like this real intense dark color at the hip up to absolutely white at the top and absolutely white at the edge of the skirt. So there, all the color will be kind of like exploding out of her, um, out of her lower gut. How fun is that? So let's put this away for a minute. And let's start penciling in this neckline. And I like to look at my drawing a couple times while I'm doing it. It's super simple. She's got a seam in the center front, then just side fronts. And I think we're going to do a built-in hip because I don't think I've done a built-in hip uh, in a class yet. So if you know our Charlotte bodice, that's what we would say has a built-in hip. Or our Regal bodice, which has a built-in hip, which a lot of people don't hook down to anything, which is fine also. looks better if it's hooked to some netting. Um, okay, so I know I know where her nipple is again. And this is just going to have the most simple sweep up to her arm hole. Super, super simple. Then, you know, if you know what your fabric is that you're working with, I can even kind of preview, right? So if my lace is going to go up from the armpit straight across, I can kind of look at my line and figure out how much how much uh, of our little flesh trick is going to happen. And it's just a little bit, and I think that's all we need. Because if I start to come down lower and lower and lower, it's going to start to look more like a traditional... Um, a traditional or folk bodice or something, which isn't what I want. I want this one to be just a little bit 
different. And then um, I have thought nothing about the back of this one, so we can have it come up and scoop down pretty far, which I think will look nicest with the laces if we kind of repeat what's going on in the front here and bring it to the back rather than trying to just make it as low as possible. Um, and since we're doing this kind of ombre effect with the, the, the purple floral and the magenta um, and the pinks, uh, I want some real estate to do that. So if I cut the back super duper low, I'm not going to get that effect of having the white, kind of the white, uh, you know, icicle look at the top. So let's just pencil in some of the bag. So I'm looking at my front, and I'm going to just kind of loosely make the back mirror the front. And I might in the front and back, scoot this out from her arm just a teeny tiny bit. So I'm gonna come out, I'm gonna come in towards the center like a quarter of an inch so that it's not pushing that little piece of arm that we've all got. And that's a tricky thing too. If you come in too far, you get all this arm showing, but if you go too far into the arm, then you get wrinkles in the bodice. So I'm, I'm kind of guessing and coming in just a itsy bitsy bit. And I'm gonna do similar in the back. So I'm not going for impress everybody with how low it is. I'm going for, I want real estate in fabric to make kind of a fashion-y thing. And this one with the white and purple is gonna be more for like photo shoots and stuff. So. So we can we can have a little more fun with it. Okay, so I want this great big wide front that's going to have a seam in the front. And actually, I can get my front seam all the way over to her armpit. I'm going to look again and see what I drew. And that's what I drew. Oh my gosh, that's funny. Um, so I'm going to make this great big seam here. And even though this is going to join the netting, um, right, this is going to join right the high hip of the tutu, I like to make the front dip down just a smidge. So I'm going to bring the front down like three-eighths of an inch. And we're going to let it have just a little bit of length in the front and then blend it, blend it up towards the side front. So just that itty bitty frustrating dip that's harder to pipe than if it were just straight across, but it looks nice. Okay, so we've got this great big sweeping center front. And right, we don't need fancy seams on this because it's all getting covered up and we're not loading it with piping or trim or stuff like the fairy doll. So we just need something that fits her body rather than something um, where we've really impressed with the seams in it. So the back, I'm coming back to the front. The back is going to just be as absolutely simple as possible. I'm just going to continue my dart up to the center back or to the to the back of the neck. Give myself a couple of notches here. Do a double notch, then we know for sure that's the back. This is going to be my center back. Now my side front's going to be quite wide, but we are going to put this kind of built-in hip in here. So um, I'm not going to figure out where I'm putting bias just yet until I can see it a little more doneer. But I am going to cut these pieces out so that I can kind of manipulate them a little bit better. And, right, if you're going along and you're like, I just need another seam in there to make it easier, put it in there. Um, I think lots of seams are practical if you're using the seams as part of the, the styling, like the trim and decoration and stuff, or using multiple fabrics or you know, ombre the fabric by using a lot of different pieces. I can't cut that direction. 
I don't think you need loads of seams if they're all going to get covered up. Like if you look at bodices from the um, from the 40s and 50s, they were just this weird front that went like that with a dart down to here over to the side. Like that's the center front. And here's the bus dart. So when it's put together, you have a dart in the middle. So this would be the other side of it. However, whatever neck you wanted. Um, so that's a lot of bodices were done like that, just with this like little pinch dart. Hardly any seams. But they didn't, they, they, they used less decoration too. Not always, but... We're more decorating now, which I just love. A tutu's like, you know, a great opportunity for a silent costume runway show. Where they dance. I mean, what more could you ask for? Okay, so now let's whack off the front here. I'm going to put a notch. And we can start seeing how I'm going to deal with this side front. And if there is going to be some built-in hip. So what's nice is this dart reached the seam that we added. So he'll just close right up and he's done with. The bus dart is out of the way really fast and easy. Get rid of the little bit that doesn't belong there. All right. Now we have kind of the same issue we had before where we've got like a dart that changes direction, like fisheye dart or a French dart. Um, but I want to make this costume to have a built-in bosque. So what's cool is I can just chop off the bosque pretty much and say that's my built-in bosque. And in a moment, you should be able to see what I mean when I'm saying built-in bosque. So I, I'm going to have a little bit of a curve going on in my side front, but our bosque is going to come out of it. So here's what's going to happen. There's going to be a little bit of a seam right there. So now I'm going to have a side front, a center front, so no middle front. That's the whole front there, right? You can see where the dart is now. And then we're going to have a front bosque that sews to the bottom of the side front. So the, the center front will be one long continuous piece, but then the side front will have just a little bit of bosque built in below it. And now we're going to bring that around to the back and do the same kind of thing. We're going to leave the center back long and we're going to put just a little bit of a curve into the back bosque. So it's there to fit her hips and because it's a neat, it's kind of a fun different little style thing. And I'm going to show you something you can do with it. Since this is all going to get like applicated and loaded up with stuff, chances of somebody adjusting this side seam, especially for something made for primarily photo uses and stuff, chances of them adjusting the side are pretty slim. So we're going to get rid of the side seam in our built-in bosque. And we're going to also see if we can just get rid of our side seam from the side front to the side back, and we can. We've got a little bit of a, a gap, right? When we close this bus start, we get a weird shape. Thank you. I'll talk to you Friday or Saturday or Sunday. Okay, cool. Have a good week. So I've got a little bit of extra in there, but we're going to just chalk it up to, we're going to, it's going to fit. 
So now we don't have a side seam from our side front to our side back, and we don't have a side seam in the bosque, but I want a little bit of flex or I want a little bit of room at the bottom of the bosque. I don't want it to be like so tight when we pipe around this and stuff. So here's what I am gonna do. I'm gonna slice from the bottom up to where we slit the bosque from the side front and back. So this is the bottom edge. And I'm gonna just add like an eighth of an inch to each of these spots. Since we're not gonna put anything on the bias, this is gonna give us just a little bit of extra wiggle room when it all goes together. So it's a hair bigger than her hip, but when all the applique and stuff goes on, we're gonna wish we hadn't uh, made it so fitted. So we're just made just the tiniest bit of extra room in the bottom. Now, if you wanted, you could absolutely put this whole piece on the bias and just make it super flexible over her hip. But since it's getting appliqued with a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't stretch, there's no advantage to making either of these on the bias right now because they are not gonna they are not gonna stretch with these giant um, you know like woven and glued motifs. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, it's neat. It's very simple, but it, I think it will be a lovely bodice. So now let's do some of the things we did on the other one. I'm going to just slice just a tiny bit in the side front and tighten that just like a little less than a quarter just to kind of help pull everything into her body. Can't do too much. It'll get weird. And then um, I think we're pretty much good everywhere else. If I wanted to do the little waist tighten up trick, we could do that too. So you could put your pieces back together and just take a little bit from each side of the waist. And we don't have many vertical seams, so we can only do this in like very few spots, like two spots. So I'm going to just shave off a little bit there. So I'm just tightening up just the waist a little bit in the front, and then I'll do the same in the back. So I'm just tightening it a little bit at the waist and then coming back out so it's not tight in her diaphragm. And then it's going to mirror that in the front just a smidge tighter at the waist and then blend that out, and then let's do the same thing back here. I'm gonna go in just a little bit. I've skipped the ruler this time. That's all right. Taking out just a little itsy bitsy bit. And really, we're all human by the time we sew this up we might lose it or we might emphasize it or we might get it just right. Just a little nip at the waist. It's like a heel pin, but for their body. Um, and actually that made me think of something else with our fairy doll one. We're gonna come back to this here in a second. The other thing, when I was on the back, I said I wanted to show you two things. Here's the second of the two things. Where you've got this big curved edge in the back, um, so both, right, the back and the front both have these straps on angles which are going to grow. I generally like to let the front of a structured thing grow at itsy bitsy bit, but the back is going to grow and then it's going to stand away from her body. So what I'm going to do, like in two spots, is just slice up to that edge that's going to grow. And I'm going to just take away like an eighth of an inch. And then I'm going to take away just at the neck edge, take away like another eighth of an inch. And by the time she wears it and stretches it out, it's going to lay just in the right spot would be our hope rather than it getting gappy. Because as soon as we cut this out, even in cotillion and fashion, and the first time we stitch it, it's going to go bleh and grow. Okay, 
Cool. Let's see. Let me think. We're going to do a sleeve. Um, what time is it? 4.07. 4.07. Let's draw on bone casings on all of this and then make a sleeve. But do I have, I've got, okay. Let's bone the more modern looking one first. It's more like a shell to put a contemporary dress on. And actually, you know what, just for fun, I'm going to leave a seam up the center front of this because um, I never do. So I'm going to leave a, I'm going to make the center front with a seam. And then I am going to run a very long bone on each side, on the outer side of each center front. So you can have bones that stop under the bust, but what happens sometimes is the top gets really wrinkled. I usually run them the whole way up, fit it, and then if it seems like it's too much bone, you can always shorten it because we'll have the casing running that whole length. Then in our side front and side back, we're going to just run nice straight angled lines. So we want it to angle towards the front. And if it angles, it helps them bend from side to side. If your bones are, if you have lots of bones that are just straight up and down, they'll get caught when they try to bend. But if it's angled, it acts a little more like a Chinese finger trap. So I'm going to do the same kind of thing in the side back. Just get kind of near that point, right? Because we want the point held up. Heck, let's go right to the point. Harder to pipe later, but we'll manage. And then in my center back, so this one's not getting tons of bones. We're going to just run one kind of right down the middle of the center back. And the hip doesn't need a bone. We're letting the hip be flexible and move. And Well, it's getting covered with stuff, so it won't be flexible, but it doesn't need a bone in it. As you'll see that there is a bone running lengthwise down each side of the hip. Now let's bone the fairy doll bodice and make her sleep. Okay, center back, side back, side front. What time is the party from? 12 to 2. The Christmas party is from 12 till 2. The next thing is the middle front, center front, center back. There's our bodice again. Um, you can decide how much or how few bones you want to have on it. Um, and I'm going to kind of like medium bone it. I'm going to say that we're going to put a bone up the center front. Have a good night. And then we're going to put a long bone up the middle front. And I'm going to run the bone casing actually all the way up to her shoulder, but we're not going to run the bone that long on this one. We're going to make the bone stop a, a little bit above her, her nipple. Actually, a little a more than a little bit above her nipple. But the reason I'm running the casing the whole way is I like to have that nice line of the bone casing rather than folding it over in weird spots. So to finish it, we're just going to stitch across it uh, to finish off the top of the bone casing. Um, and I think we're going to go... I just got to figure out where nipple is again. We're going to go like as if this bodice didn't have a strap. So I'm guessing kind of where the top edge of the bodice would be. We're going to put one bone in her side front. I wonder if we should put her in her crate. We have the puppy here today. I don't want her to whiz on anything. She likes the oh, who doesn't like marabou? Um... There, so we're going to put a bone in the side front. I'm going to skip the side back, and then we're just going to put a bone straight up the center back. Because for this variation, she doesn't, I think she's going to be all right if she's just somewhat boned. We don't have to load her up with bones. Center back one, actually, it could run at a, it could run at a slight angle. My colored pencils are gone, so I'm going to just use a Sharpie. Yeah, I'm good. 
except that Sharpie is like a paintbrush. So I'm going to angle it just a little bit. So it's going to angle towards her center. And the nice thing when we put the bone casing, so that's my bone. If I was going to put one on the side back, I would, I would kind of do the opposite of what I did in the side front. I would make it angle towards the center back. Why don't we just mark this one here, but I'm not going to put it in the real costume. And with this not having the side back on the bias, it's a little sturdier already, so it's like kind of has a bone quality to it. Um, anyways. Would you grab me the arm from somewhere? I wonder if we should use the child. Bring me the child's arm and the other arm. Um, I need an arm. Okay, so we remembered that this girl's armhole is 14 and a half, and we need that to draft our sleeve. So we've got fairy doll bodice. We've got fairy doll boss. We're going to do fairy doll sleeve. And then I think trace out a couple pieces so you guys can see how I trace stuff out. And then if we've got time today, we'll make a plan for the netting um, for the, the white and purple one. The fairy doll one is going to go right on top of a tutu that we already made. But it will be exactly the same steps as the white one that we are going to make. Side, right? No, just these two. Okay. So I'm just trying to decide if that's like a young woman's arm. This is a young woman's arm. And that's a slightly older than young woman's arm. Um, so I'm missing stuff, though, to make my sleeve. I know the girl's armhole, and that's about it, which isn't quite enough info. But we're going to just guess the rest of what we need from this mannequin arm. So I know I want it to go down to her shoulder. So I'm going to say her sleeve, her down to her shoulder. It's going to go from her shoulder down to her elbow. Um, so we're going to say that the height of her sleeve is 12 inches. And then we're going to work with an arm's eye, an armhole that's 14 and a half. But we're going to expand the armhole so that we've got somewhere um, to put uh, gathers and stuff. And I think I'll do it like they do in the costume technician book where we're going to slash and spread it because it's easier to see what we're doing. I got to refine the good Sharpie. Here it is. Did you see how it's double task them? The antibiotics make everything so clear. I wish. Okay, so let's just start with the height of our sleeve. And this is all in that costume technician handbook. Um, which hand me that copy right there. So what we're going to do, so like I started with a sleeve, or a, I started with a body block to start carving out our bodices. On page 137, there's a sleeve block. So we start with the length of the sleeve. It has you put in the elbow, the bicep, all this stuff, and it goes down to the wrist. But since I'm not going down to the wrist, I'm going just to the elbow, I'm just going to use the information that I need to get down to the elbow, okay? And, and the sleeve block starts with a fitted sleeve, not a fluffy sleeve like we're actually making. Um, so, But I'm going to follow the steps in there. So from my shoulder to my elbow is going to be 12 inches. And then the other thing we've got to know is how far is it down from the shoulder to like the top of the bicep. And that helps you figure out um, where, you know, where the cap of the sleeve is. So I'm going to say that on this girl, it's just like five inches. But let me tell you something cool. I'm guessing it's five inches, right? If I do four inches, she'll be able to move her arm more and will need less of a built-in gusset. So we're going to just say our 14 and a half inch armhole is 15. Here, just put just put her in the put her in her cage. Puppy's going to jail. So um, our 14 and a half armhole, I round to 15. The first thing the book has you do 
is take away three inches from the arm's eye because when you make the cap of the sleeve, you're going to get them back. So 15, 14, 13, 12. That's easy. We're going to go six inches on either side of this line. And this is going to be how we create our cap. And then in a little bit, we're going to slash and spread and make it fluffy. So right now we've got the shoulder. We've got her elbow. Now in making the sleeve block, it has you tighten up the bottom edge because it's that's normally your wrist, but we're not going all the way down to the wrist. So I am going to just go straight down. So I've got my Etch-A-Sketch house here. We're going to just go straight down. Oh boy, my math wasn't right. I went six inches on each side of that. Six inches. Oh, I'm just going to start again. I was off an inch. Let's see. Try that again. 12 inches down the center. And I want to go six. It's because this silly ruler has numbers running one way on one side and running the other way on the other side. It does not help. There, that looks better. Sorry about that. I should write Fiskers a letter. I don't know what you're getting at. This ruler makes no sense. Oh, the puppy's going to take a nap. Okay, so now, now we have our little sleeve house here. The first thing you do is divide that line into thirds. And I'm just going to eyeball it. And you move that mark up above. So, right, this has no poof. This is not a fancy thing yet. Then we go a little bit above this line. And this is all in the book. So get the costume technician handbook. And we go a little bit below that line. We go a little bit more above at the back so that she's got a little room and then here we're going to go right to the line so this is just the most basic sleeve cap and it's kind of fitted so we're gonna we need to start with something that fits and then we can morph away from it um if if you do a lot of patterning eventually you'll be able to just make the puffy sleeve without starting here but it's good to start Start with your sleeve house, right? And go from there. Okay, now the next thing I've got to decide is where the gather is going to go across this sucker because remember, we're making like a ball and then a littler ball. Well, it's, a, it's about similar balls. <laughs> that didn't sound right. And then we're going to put a ruffle on the bottom. So there's her shoulder strap and her, the side of her bodice. Um, I'm going to just say that because sometimes we like to divide things in the middle, I'm going to just divide this section right in half. And that is going to make the cap puff bigger than the bottom puff, but across the underarm. Like if we take the calf, calf, cap away, we'll have kind of a similar thing going on. Let's do it and see how it works. So we still have to explode this and make it big. Which I'll need another piece of paper about this wide soon. Thank you. Then, um, it is good to know that the front of the sleeve is on the left and the back of the sleeve is on the right. I like to dip down the back of the sleeve for something like that. And I like to raise up the front just a little bit because you get a little more a little more fun going on. So now I'm just going to use my curved ruler to blend all of those lines together.
And this doesn't need an opening because the bottom's going to be elastic. Thanks. Just set it right there. Um, now, before we spread it out, we can kind of figure out like how much poof do we want. Um, and the way you can do that is I just take a tape measure. So right, right, right now my tape measure has no poof. If I push it up, I start to get poof. Um, so that's how we're going to approach this one because we're not going like total Victorian crazy, but we want a little bit of volume in the sleeve. So imagine that you're like looking at it sideways. That's kind of how much puff I want in that section. So my 8-inch thing is going to become 9.5 inches. So it's going to be long, the pattern will be longer than that portion of her arm is. And since it's going to fit at her elbow, when that nine and a half inches is pushed up to eight, then you get a little bit of a ball. Now, if you want the cap to be taller too, we can add a little bit to the cap. So we're going to add an inch and a half up here. We're going to split this and give it an inch and a half more room up and down. And then, right, so even though we kind of divided this in a similar way, I know that it will look neater if the bottom section we only add an inch so that her sleeve kind of goes for bump and then in just a little bit and then the ruffle. So I'm going to split across this one and add only one inch. Our gathering line, so this is going to be a channel to gather, has not moved. That's going to, that will stay the same. And this is going to be one thing. We don't have to sew the bottom onto the top. Now, if you wanted less volume around, you would make a bottom and a top, and you'd spread the top out one amount, the bottom out a less amount, and gather them onto a little ribbon or band or piece of bias. And that way you can have less, less puff around and more puff around. And since we want to make the cap, so let's say we want to make the top of this stand up just a little bit more. I'm going to just add about an inch to my very top, to my shoulder. And I don't want it too much in the front, so I'm going to blend this quickly back to the front. But I want to kind of drag it out in the back. So I'm going to just bring it a little further before I go over and down. Now, right now, even when this is spread and gathered, she needs a little help raising her arm. It's just a little bit tight. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of a gusset in there. And if you look in the book, oh, I'm going to be drawing over my drawing, you'll see that it talks about balance points. I'm going to take a ruler and center it horizontally between my balance points. Can you grab me one of those blue flexible rulers that are hanging over there? Okay, so we're going to raise the armpit up. So from above the balance points, she's not like mechanically doing anything with her arm. Like her shoulder isn't going to dislocate and move but the balance points are kind of where her arm moves. So if we can raise the cap up to the height of the balance point, it'll be like we've got a built-in gusset. So I just like to use this ruler, right? So what happens sometimes is people will take this line straight up. It's not quite the right thing to do. You want to actually measure this distance. So I'm putting my zero down here, and then you bend that up to your line. So I've I've actually measured this section of my line and have bent it up to the space that's kind of centered between our balance points. And that's really kind of the shape of a gusset we need so that she can move her arm more. So let me do that here now. So I'm trying, I need to get out to my zero. I mean, you don't even need to look at numbers. You could just put the end of the ruler down and say that's what you're going to use. So this is going to kind of curve out and then curve back in. So let's cut that out and make it poofy now. 
That's the one I screwed up. Bye forever. Okay, so what we're going to do next is slash and spread this to add in volume and fluff. So by raising the cap, we made a little more poof at the top of her shoulder. And some of this, some of you are going like, oh, yeah, I get it. And, I, and you can already see the, like, skip a step part. You can kind of figure out how much fullness you want around the body and just start with that. Um, but it's good to see it. So now in these two spots where we decided we're adding our, right, we have to add up and down to make it poof away from her arm. Otherwise, it just lays next to her arm. So this top bit, we're going to add an inch and a half. If I added two inches, there'd be more poof. If I added a half an inch, there'd be a little bit of poof. We want like a goldie, a mama bear amount of poof. And, you know, in your free time, when you've got nothing to work on, make ten of these little sleeves, each with a different amount of poof, and then stand back and look at them and go, yeah, that's the amount of poof I want. We're gonna have to make some more tape bridges because we're gonna we're gonna slice this apart. I think we're gonna get to measuring out some netting, which is great. Then tomorrow um, we'll be tracing out bodice. We'll be tracing out both bodices, putting on some bone casing, and getting some fashion on. And probably tomorrow we'll dye a little bit of net for the purple one and then um, start making a panty. You'll see why in a second why I'm like really taping this up. Because I'm going to cut it apart. And I don't want to lose anything. If anybody's got the folk bodice pattern, that is how that sleeve has begun. Actually, I'm looking at my clock. I gotta take this awful thing. Mmm, modern medicine makes you feel terrible. The antibiotic is worse than what it's treating, I think. But the doctor said since I had an allergic reaction to a different antibiotic that this one is great. I disagree. Okay, so now we're going to slice this sucker apart. That's why I made the little tape bridges so we don't like totally explode. Now, thinking about slashing and spreading and fabric and stuff, you can keep your sleeve va va voom even by spreading the same amount in each of these spots. You can make the top a little more glorious by opening the top more than the bottom or you can Juliet ball gown this sucker and make the top a little bit less or Marie Antoinette it, and make the bottom bigger and I'm thinking for our cute little fairy doll that we want the top to be bigger and the bottom less big but I'm going to put another split in each of these guys so that I can fan it out a little more even. I don't. I want to not have to blend so much curve together. I'm not going to put a bunch of gathers in the armpit, so I'm not going to really do a whole lot with the armpits. So then, right, you've got this other, you've got this line that's going to be a gathering stitch on there. You can kind of use it to make, to make your plan. Like, I'm like following that arc there. Then we're going to tape it to the table, lift it up, and tape it to a new piece of pattern paper. And you eventually kind of start to get the sense for like how big is enough, right? I know that if it's not twice as big as it was, it's not going to look intentional. So I'm going to go even a tiny bit bigger and her top plate remember is covered 
with miles of ocean foam fuzz. So whatever we do here will be welcome, you know, size-wise. So we'll have a little bit of gather in the bottom, and then we'll put our, our pretty um, lace edge on, and we'll have gathers a little bit ways up and then two puffs. Make a new tape bridge. I should have done this on top of my paper. Why I didn't. It's all right. I'm going to go like that. I'm going to stick one like that. I'm going to lift it up. Hold your breath. No, I've got it. I've done this so many times. Lay it down. And then just kind of stretch him back out. Kind of keep looking at what you've got. And make sure you haven't like completely wrecked it. Then... Now we can kind of trace it up a little bit nicer and say it's good to go. So you're kind of like just visually now connecting all of these spots. And really you're kind of aiming for the middle of each of those pieces. And since we split this down the center, here now is our shoulder, right? So I'm going to actually kind of go from here to that guy, to that guy. I'm imagining that this kind, this curve keeps going, so I'm going to kind of go up to my shoulder and then start working my way down. I'm hitting for the middle, but if you stray a little bit to make a nicer curve, it's going to be all right to have a nicer curve. And everybody from page to stage one, eventually I will get that bodice sized and let everybody choose one. Just like page to stage two, I will eventually get this sized and let everybody choose one. But my hope is that you will start making more patterns on your own. Where's the tree? We want to make sure we know where this is. And we want to know where our balance points are. So there's going to be no gathering in the armpit. All the gathering will be between the balance points. Done with that. Here's our front. It will gather all the way to our back. And we will put a casing right here so that we get our two puffs. Let me cut that out. And the grain line for this will be right down the center. And that gives us flex under her armpit, which gives more movement. Like you end up with a little bias there and there, which just is like more gussety stuff. More gusset. Your bottom edge can be straight across. You don't have to do this raise up in the front and lower in the back. I generally think it looks more prettier. Um, but what I'll have to figure out as time goes by is am I cutting off my 
lacy edge? Or am I going to see what happens with it? No, don't like it. I think we're going to probably cut off. We're going to cut off this, this most scallopy edge so that we can gather it onto the bottom of this or graft it on there. Because right now we're going to only end up with a like two and a half, almost three bumps ruffled at the bottom edge, but I want to use, I want to use all four of them since I've got four. So I'll be chopping this off and applying it to the bottom here as if it's not cannibalized and then using the rest of the goods as they go up into the sleeve. So our sleeve will have this nice little bit of embroidery uh, going on each side of where that gathered casing is. And then by whacking off the scallops and like Frankensteining them back on, it's going to look more sweeter and more darlinger. Okay. Does anybody have questions about that? How is it going, everybody? Is anybody there? Has anybody typed anything? I should shave. Um, before we figure out our netting links, let me trace a couple bodice pieces so that the folks that that is new for can kind of see um, the plan there and how we do it. And we don't put seam allowance on it because it's too hard um, to alter the pattern. And for me, you don't get an accurate of a thing if people are relying on seam allowance. You get more of an accurate costume if they've got to match the lineup. I'm going to just cut a piece of this out so I'm not using the whole thing. So we've got double wash stiff cotil, which it's not as stiff when you wash it twice. And we iron the heck out of it because um, you don't want it to, you want to like beat it up before you use it and then you have to treat it like a gentle thing, like something nice that you're working hard on. Okay, hey, that kind of fits in my, my messy, messy spot. So general seam allowances are an inch at the side or three quarters at the side, half inch everywhere else, two inches or an inch and a half at the center back. Some people do three if they know there a lot of girls are going to have to share them. And then... Um, as far as like the seam allowance above the neck and below the hem, if you think you're going to need a length in it ever, you can put more seam allowance at the bottom of a bodice or the bottom of a bosque, um, and then just like move the piping down and reattach the netting. Um, but since I trust both sets of these measurements, I'm just going to do half inch at my top and half inch at my bottom because we'll be cutting and building these without a fitting. So let's trace out some of our fairy doll bodice. The same girl who gets this gets the Spanish one we worked on in the last page to stage. Okay, so I'm going to do this with a pencil because if I use a color pencil when we iron it, it's going to bleed through. And especially since these both, one is kind of white and one is pretty pale, um, we don't want it bleeding through. But... What I like to do, this side doesn't show as much as this side does it. I should start with this side. Um, what I like to do is actually mark a, a few spots in the twill. Like if you're not, um, if you're not up on cotille, you know, when you look at it, you'll see that there's kind of stripes built into it. Um, I like to make sure that my straight of grain is absolutely lined up. And then we're just going to pencil that on. And you know, another thing I found working in a couple big shops is the people who like to pin this on and trace it. Number one, it takes them forever. And the other thing is you end up with a really inaccurate thing because when you pin it, you're changing the surface of the paper with the with the cotille and it just doesn't work out so great. 
you could use little weights, but I would say we're all we're we're all talented enough that we should be able to just hold this down as we go and then like give it a look and see if you haven't messed anything up. Then like as far as where this bone goes, I'm gonna just walk the piece back. I wanna put my waist in. I'm gonna just walk the piece back and mark where the bone is. So I'm just looking at the front where the bone is. And look, there we can see where the bone is there. So we can connect our bone. And when you sew it on, you'll even this out even better. That's going to be our bone. Got my notches on. I like to know exactly where the waist is just because it's going to help line stuff up later. Then we're going to do two inches at the center back. I have seen some notes that some people like to use the very edge of the salvage edge as their center back. You'll see I didn't um, because when it gets heated up, it shrinks differently than the like inside the goods, like it gets too tight. So uh, I generally don't put my center back right up to the edge of the fabric, even though I totally get why some people are like, put the center back right up to the edge. It's just that edge doesn't act the same. And you may have even sewn some stuff. I'm going to put three quarters at her shoulder just in case she needs a smidge of room. Um, you may have sewn some items where the instructions start with cut off the salvage edge. And, and uh, it lets the fabric relax more when you iron it and when it's laying on your table. Fun to know. So we've got our, we, obviously this is our center back, but I'm going to just write, that's my center back. Then let's do a side back. Same thing. I am going to kind of figure out, like I don't want to waste a ton of space, but I also don't want them so close. Like when I first cut this out, you'll see that I'm going to cut a little bit outside my pencil line. Um, to help keep some structure to this. If we cut right on the pencil line, as soon as we start playing with it, it's all going to grow and get weird. Um, but for my side back, I'm going to just use a ruler and figure out which part of the twill I'm really following here. And I'm not on it, but I am now. So if I put my grain line in there like that, then I can like really make sure that my grain line is following everything correct. I'll put in the waist, I'll mark the bone. Remember th things that you need two of to flip them. There was a snarky comment a couple years ago because somebody did not like that I did not write and flip your pattern uh, with the 11 piece bodice. I thought, I don't know, maybe you shouldn't be sewing if that, if that, you know, look, here's the other thing you can do. Just fold it where your bone is. I thought, well, maybe she shouldn't be sewing if this is news don't worry she's not in this group there that's easy there's my bone i am gonna mark the waist in really nice and i'm gonna do three quarters here at this side so i usually you know like if something is going to get worn by like 80 people i'll definitely put an inch but i sometimes feel that like an inch is just a little much and three quarters is just a smidge more nicer. I think I'll take these home and trace them all. So no, nothing will be any different for the more modern looking bodice that we're working on. 
Now, if I thought this girl needed a fitting or I was nervous about measurements or something, I might put more seam allowance up here and more seam allowance at the bottom so that I've got somewhere to adjust stuff. But I don't think I need to this time around. Okay, let's kind of make a plan for the netting and then that's where we're going to end today. Um, would you grab me the pink tutu that's down there? The, you, Jared's already made the skirt for the fairy doll and then we'll be making the white skirt uh, in cooking show stages together. Right now it's just poof, which is great. I don't know. I'll look. Oh, no, it's just really tight. Yeah. So, the, like, right, you can't see anything. None of this has been steamed or tacked. But at one point, this is what all great tutus look like, a giant hot mess. Um, but if we look at the underside, you can kind of start to see, oh, this one's dyed. That's fun. Oh, no, it's just cream and pink layered together. Um, I used to, at the crotch, I used to start with like an inch and a half or an inch because somebody told me that that's what I was supposed to do. And then over the years, as I looked at tutus from all over the planet, I realized there's no one right way to do it. Actually, I figured that out real fast. Um, but I like to start with two inches, four inches, six inches, eight inches, or somewhere in there because nobody's looking this close. And if you can get some, you know, if you can get some length and some net on there pretty quick, um, you're going to have more time to actually decorate it. Um, so let's just see what she's got. She's got one, two, three, four, a hoop layer, five and six are the hoop. Then she's got seven and eight and nine, and then she's going to have some glitzy lace, and then the thing earlier that we looked at that Deborah was working on. So this one's nine layers because we're going to count the top plate like it's 10 or 10, 11, 12 because there's a lot going on there. Um, so let's make the cutting guide for our white one. So this one is 14 inches from the high hip out. And we came up with that number because the girl's coach said it's what looks good on her. And when you've got info straight from the source, um, just use it. I'm going to just figure this one out right on the back. So the top plate of this purple one is going to get loaded up with stuff. Um, so we probably need like a 9 or a 10 layer skirt to hold this all up. And it's going to have a hoop in it. This fairy doll one might get a hoop in it. It might not. We might put the hoop in it and then shrink the hoop to make the to make kind of a bell, like a rigid bell. Or we might tack it all together, put the top on it, and go, it's so funny and sweet when it bounces. So that we've got to kind of sort out with the girl and her coach a little bit. Um, but this white one, we're going to say, is going to get 10 layers. So we're going to go 10, 9, 8. This is a roundabout way, but it works really well. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. At one point, I had this great big binder of every tutu I had ever made and the lengths. And could you believe that uh, at the Joffrey, somebody swiped that that was on a tour? They thought, oh, that's handy. I think I know who it was. But that's why I just start fresh every time. Okay, so one is going to be the shortest, and ten is going to be what comes out of the high hip. Now... I'm going to start with a pencil. I'm going to go, first we should figure out where we're going to, like where we're starting and where we're going. I'm going to start with two. Used to start with one and a half. Didn't, no one freaked out when I moved to two inches. But since this is kind of fashiony and dramatic, um, and it's more on a young woman than a kid, I want to go like 15 and a half or 16 for my top, for my number 10. So I'm going to say we're going to cut 16. When it's done, it will end up 15 and a half because we lose a half an inch seam allowance. So I'm going to say 2, 4, 6. And then I'm going to go, so we've got 2 inch skip, 2, 4, 6. 
Here I'm going to go 16, 15, 14. The less skip you have, the, the more filled out your edge will be and the little, you'll have a little more structure at the edge. Now if anybody's like made like a dying swan, like a, like a legit like 14 or 16 layer dying swan, for some reason dying swan has like just tons of layers, um, it usually goes 16, 15 and a half, 15, 14 and a half. Then it goes like 13 and a half, 12 and a half, 11 and a half. Um, but they only have a half an inch different at those edges to keep all of that length. And actually a dying swan, on a, like an average height professional girl, is usually like 17 inches at the top, maybe even 18. It's a great big tutu because she's at the end of her life and she's going to die. So now we got to figure out kind of how to get from 6 to 14. So the next thing I do is I do some half inch ones. So I go 14, or not half inch, inch and a half. I'm going to go 14 minus an inch and a half. So that's 13, 12 and a half. 12 and a half minus an inch is what? 12 and a half, 11 and a half, 11, 10, 9 and a half, 9 and a half minus an inch and a half is 9 and a half, 8 and a half, 7. Okay, so now we've got like a minor dilemma. We go 2, 4, 6, and then 1 inch, and then inch and a half ones. So let's just let's just fudge something and then we're going to be good to go wait it is what's nine and a half it's because i am on antibiotics what's eight ah it works thank god jared's here look two four six eight nine and a half am i right eleven twelve and a half thirteen and a half fourteen fifteen sixteen we're set to go so we're going to go 2, 4, 6, 8, 9 and a half, 11, 12 and a half, 14, 15, 16. Have somebody double check your math. Now, this white one is going to get a hoop in it, and I want the hoop to be somewhere in the middle. Now, we've got a nice ruffling machine um, that lets us double up layers and ruffle them at the same time. You might not have a nice ruffling machine, but I've doubled layers since the first tutus I ever made. Um, I would stitch a couple layers together and run them through like a home ruffler once or twice or gather on a string or zigzag over high mark. Um, and when I'm sitting in a machine tomorrow, we can show you some different ways to gather. But um, right on your panty, right, you've got your panty here. If you're trying to sew 10 lines on that poor tortured thing, what's going to happen is the whole panty is going to go bleh, even if you're using non-stretch. If you're like a bobbinet holdout from the Louis the what, Louis the Sixteenth, the Sun King of France, is that right? Louis the Sixteenth, Fourteenth, one of the Louis who invented ballet. Um, actually, they didn't put crotches in their tutus either, which is why tutu is called crotch. It just means vagina. But if you're trying to sew that many layers on your sad little panty the panty will grow, no matter how great of a sewer you are. I know already. I've been there, done that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a couple layers coming out at a time. So we're going to have like layer one and layer two coming out the same line. Then we're going to have layer three and layer four coming out the next line so that we can cut in half the amount of times we have to sew on the panty. Right, right. So I'm going to say one and two are together, three and four are together, five and six are going to get our hoop because this white one's going to need a hoop. Then seven and eight are together. And since the top is getting loaded up with stuff, um, here's, here's where we're, what we're going to do. We're going to do nine by itself. And then let's actually, I'm changing it up. We're going to do 10, only 15 and a half. You'll know why, what I'm, you'll see where I'm at here in a second. We're going to do 10 at 15 and a half. I just shrunk the whole thing, but we could redo it all, whatever. It's a gift. Um, I, not from me. Um, 
what we're going to do is we're going to cut a ton of tool for 10. So 10 is going to be like a mega amount of nice white tool that's going to also have purple crud on top of it. So we're going to be sewing some crud on net. We're going to sew a little bit of crud on the tool. We're going to dye the hip edge of the tool. Then we're going to make a donut of net and put more crud on that. So it's going to, there'll be a few layers of stuff going on. So nine is going to sew on all by himself and 10 is going to be tool and it's going to sew on by himself. And usually the tool, since it's spongy and more tricky, I usually just backstitch it on by hand. I can put it on by hand nicely faster than I can wrestle it through a sewing machine. Any questions for today? No? Did you guys have fun? It's bedtime. I need to go home and go to bed. Sorry I had to look at my gross face all day, but, you know, my voice works, so that's what matters. We're good? Someone who's on my official list, tell Jared goodbye. You know who you are. And then... Oh, good. You're welcome. This is fun. I could do this for hours. Like, I do it anyways. They're going to both be fun and different. And we will have a follow-up fourth day and maybe a fifth day if we've got to. But we want to mail these by Tuesday. Okay, you exit out. I'm going to take some cotille home and trace out these suckers. Oh, no. Um, and the dog ate the cord for my design pad. I can't believe it. Can you close it from yours? Try closing it from here. I think it will keep going. Can we tab to it? End webinar.